We've almost reached the end of season two in the Oakland A's franchise, but before we end this year, I've wanted to call up our number two prospect, Tyler Soderstrom, to make his major league debut. He's had a great year at AAA, and I think he's ready. His offense is in a really nice spot. His defense isn't anything great, but I want his bat in the lineup, and I want to see him continue to develop. The plan is to have him DH, while Teoscar Hernandez now plays right field. While we close in on the end of year two, there are a few players I've wanted to focus on. Ken Waldachuk has done a really good job in the bullpen this year, and it's time to see him make some starts once again. We're going to move him to the rotation and swap out Luke Weaver, who has been a failed free agent addition to this point. If you were hoping to see Aaron Don get called up, I don't think now is the time. I want to see him finish the year at AAA, hopefully working on his power and his arm strength. I think in year two, there's a very good chance he makes his debut. But today I want to start off by focusing on Tyler Soderstrom. He is our number two prospect. And the plan is to hopefully develop him into an everyday first baseman and maybe a DH until that day really comes. Now, the first part of this video, I actually streamed the gameplay over the weekend if you would like to check it out. We begin with Tyler Soderstrom making his debut against the Houston Astros, facing a good pitcher in Christian Javier, and falling behind 0-2 in his first big league at bat. Javier misses inside, and then does so again to even the count 2-2, two two, misses high to run the count full. Soderstrom battles back in the AB and draws a walk with those two strike pitches not being very competitive. We load the bases here in the second inning, a chance for Jace Peterson to do some damage, and he chops it weakly as Javier gathers and throws him out to get out of the jam. So let's bring it to the fourth inning. It is 1-0 Oakland, two down for Soderstrom. Still doesn't have an official at bat with that walk in his first appearance. And Javier misses the first three. That is seven straight balls thrown to Soderstrom. And then swings through one 3-0 to get the first strike. And then Javier will run this count full. Three and two. Lifted to deep left. And that one's twisting foul. But there's a, a little glimpse of the power. Another one. This one's hammered out to left field. He keeps it fair. And his first hit is his first big league home run. Welcome to the show, Tyler Soderstrom. How about that for an appearance? He should be a very good power bat in this lineup. And as far as prospects go, he has very well developed hitting. We got glimpses of it back in the spring, but his inconsistency led him to starting the year at AAA. But he has mashed down there, hit around 270 in AAA, and improved his hitting against lefties quite a bit, which is pretty key as a left-handed hitter. Soderstrom gets number one out of the way and then hits one hard to first base. That one is caught. And in the eighth inning, facing a 3-2 count, he picks up his first big league strikeout. So a little bit of everything in his first game for Tyler Soderstrom as the A's win 6 to nothing. Pretty fun way to get things underway. You always like a strong debut. And the A's take 3 of 4 from the Astros. In the following game, we scored 10 runs and beat them by 7. A busy ninth inning for us. And then on the Sunday game, a 2-1 to one victory where Soderstrom picked up three more hits, all of them singles, and Gunnar Hoagland shut down the Astros. So we're going to go into a matchup against the LA Dodgers because I wanted to see Ken Waldachuk's return to the rotation. I'm impressed with his development this year. And actually, as I check out his stats, this is start number 20. So he hasn't been out of the rotation for long. So we already know he's had a lot of good starts this season. But facing a tough lineup here in the Dodgers as Castillo will line one to left for a base hit. And behind the plate in this game, I wanted to see Soderstrom play. He doesn't have great defensive skills and fails to throw out Castillo. Three and two to Freddie Freeman and Waldachuk picks up his first strikeout. But I've wanted to see Soderstrom play there a little bit to at least get the experience. 
A blast to left from Mookie Betts sends Nick Gordon back, and the jump was a little offline. And then Bellinger has a problem with it. And it's 1-0 after Betts nearly goes yard. Little bit later, base hits center field for Reese Hoskins, and Betts comes around to score as Waldachuk gives up two in the first. We'll go top of the second with a runner on. Again, they test Soderstrom, and his arm is nothing like Shea Langoliers. The Dodgers do not score in the second, but continue to mash off of Waldachuk. Here is Freddie Freeman to the right center gap. That's a leadoff double in the third. Two batters later, Reese Hoskins. A drive to deep center field. And that one is gone. The Dodgers make it 4 0 early, hitting Waldachuk very hard. If it makes you feel any better, he has allowed less home runs this year compared to last. But a pretty rough start to this game for the A's. 4 0 as we go bottom three. Dustin May on the mound, and Nick Madrigal with a base hit to right center. And that goes to the track as he makes his way into second base. Then the nine hitting, Jace Peterson grounds one, pass second into right field. First and third for the A's, their first scoring threat of the game. We would load the bases for Teoscar Hernandez. Driven out to deep center. It's run down, but it's deep enough to tag up and get our first run across. Hoping for a little bit more, it's Seth Brown grounded to the right side. Out at second, the turn to first is not in time. And we add on another run. I was hoping to see Ken Waldachuk settle things down, but everybody kept hitting him very hard. Base hit for James Outman. Austin Barnes, the nine hitter, with Outman going the third stolen base already. A couple of those I think Shea's able to throw out. Base hit Miguel Rojas, and that brings home Outman to make it 5-2. And that would be it for Ken Waldachuk. He would pitch just four innings, giving up five runs off of eight hits. Not the showing I was hoping for. We continue on. Trailing by three, it's Dustin May hitting his old teammate, Cody Bellinger. Brings up Ryan Anderson. He's healthy once again. And lines one into left. Down for a hit. First two reach in the fourth. It brings up Tyler Soderstrom. There's a drive going the other way. Belted off the scoreboard. Bellinger scores. We hold Anderson. More opposite field power on a Tyler Soderstrom. His first big league double. Two in scoring position. Up high, walking Madrigal. The bases are loaded for the A's. Jace Peterson at the plate. Lined into right. Fair ball into the corner, and the A's tie the game. Peterson to second as it's a 5-5 game. How about the offense coming together for the Oakland A's? Here's a chance for Teoscar Hernandez. He grounds one. Tough play at second base. Hernandez beats it out, and Oakland has taken the lead. That is six runs off of Dustin May. Seth Brown's turn, chop to the right side, quick flip on to second, and they double him up to end the threat. But Oakland, with a very good fourth inning, suddenly we have a chance to extend this winning streak, but now what do you do with the bullpen? You've got to go a long way in this game, and Luke Weaver struggled, Anthony Kay has struggled, but we're throwing out Luke Weaver. The hope was, go get two solid innings, Lefties are hitting 400 off of him. Mookie Betts into center field. He sharply hits a single. Reese Hoskins, 1-2. Yeah, I'd like to get that strike three call preferably. And Hoskins, 3-2, does not go around. Frustrating at bats. First two reach in the fifth here is Chris Taylor, 1-2. Got him looking. There's a big strikeout for Weaver. Followed up, it's Max Muncy, 0-2. He gets him looking. Don't know why that wasn't a strike earlier in the inning, but we'll take it there. Trying to battle back, here is Outman. And after getting those strikeouts, Weaver just loses him on four pitches to load the bases. A rocky inning for Luke Weaver. 
The nine hitting Austin Barnes. Low ball three, this runs the count full. Payoff pitch, he missed it away. And he walks in a run to tie the game at six. Top of the order up again, Hilberto Castillo. That's high, his third walk of the inning will bring home the seventh run. So we bring out Daniel Hudson, we do not even get a full inning out of Luke Weaver. Miguel Rojas chasing one wildly, and then the changeup gets him to swing. A really ugly at bat for Rojas with the bases loaded, and he's out. Hudson finishes it off, but after our great offensive showing, we're trailing all over again. Hudson pitches into the sixth. Here's one into right. Dropping in front of Hernandez and trying to go to third base. The Dodgers create another threat. We'll bring in Anthony Kay. He's been good at one thing, getting lefties out. And Max Muncy lifts this into shallow left as Anderson is back and takes care of it. But I thought, all right, let's keep Anthony Kay out there. Outman's next. He strikes him out. The lefties are no problem. But how do you have any confidence pitching him to righties? Hey, a ground ball. Anderson's there. And he makes the play. All right, let's keep him out there. Castillo's up next. That's into center. Bellinger chasing after it. And Anthony K ends up giving us a very good seventh inning. But the A's still trailing as we go bottom of the seventh. It's been a rough stretch lately for Seth Brown. As he drives one out to left center field. Castillo going back at the wall. This one is gone. Home run 19 for Seth Brown, as this game is tied up once again. And for some reason, I trusted Anthony K to continue. Miguel Rojas jammed to the right side, and Madrigal makes the play. Anthony K getting the job done. Now you got Freddie Freeman, who hits lefties just fine. But K stays out there, two and two. Grounded softly to Madrigal. How about Anthony K picking up six big outs for us? I was done there. I didn't want to see him pitch to Mookie Betts. Drew Steckenrider couldn't get him out, and then Reese Hoskins pops it up for Madrigal. So we're able to keep this game tied, seven apiece, and we go bottom of the eighth inning. Dodgers in their bullpen. Here is the flamethrower, Bruzdar, Gratterall, base hit for Madrigal. The bottom of our order had an outstanding game. Jace Peterson, three for three. This pitch is in the dirt, but on the play, Nick Madrigal got hurt. I don't know if he dove back, but he complained of leg pain, and now he's replaced by Tyler Wade. So the go-ahead run is aboard. Peterson, three for three, draws the walk, and he's reached again. Top of the order, it's Nick Gordon. 0 for 3. Into center. Wade in position to tag as this one is run down on the warning track. And Wade moves to third base. First and third one down for Hernandez. That's into center. Not hit very deep. Castillo's under it. And Wade is going to test him. The throw cut off as Wade scores the go-ahead run. Oakland back in front. And that brings up Seth Brown. Homered in his previous at bat. And this one is turned on. Deep to right. Back goes Betts. This is gone. Seth Brown, second homer of the day. And it's suddenly 10-7 Oakland. Where did this come from? The A's playing for their fourth consecutive win. And the offensive showcase is unlike anything we've seen in this series. Domingo Acevedo comes out to close it down. He strikes out Chris Taylor on the outside corner. Gets Muncy looking. Up by three. It's down to one out. James Outman. Gone on strikes. The game is over. And the A's win one of the best games of the franchise. The offense really came to play for us. In the bottom of the order, 
Number eight and nine hitting, Madrigal and Peterson combined for six hits and two walks. This was an all-around team effort, and everybody contributed. It was so much fun. I'm not sure exactly how we attempt to follow those games up, but I'll give it my best shot. Hope you guys are enjoying the action here in Season 2. I think we're going to be done with it this week and on to our next offseason, probably over the weekend. There are still a few players I'm thinking about calling up, mainly when the rosters expand here pretty soon. I'd like to see Luis Medina make his debut. Feel like he's earning that chance. He's had a really good year at AAA, and he's in that 68 overall range where you see a lot of guys that are called up. So I think that it's time when September rolls around. I'm now trying to train the power a bit for Aaron Don. I was working on his throwing arm earlier and his accuracy is up four and his arm, I think that strength is up by two. So that's the main reason why he hasn't been called up. I'd like to see these weaknesses worked on a little bit and it's probably easier for him to also strengthen his contact against lefties by hitting against AAA competition. So we'll keep an eye on him and his progress. But the plan is to probably bring him to spring training to begin year two. Now, I've also had some feedback regarding Joe Michael and how I should handle this situation. Because we have a generational pitching prospect. So, obviously, it's not realistic for a player to just go straight to the majors. But I do feel here with an 82 overall player. 82. He would easily be the number one prospect, number one player at any minor league level. I think there is a chance he does open on the big league roster and just goes to spring training and we see how he does because he's a generational player. And so I, I do think that it makes some sense to just call him right up when he's the second highest rated player on the team. I'm also hoping that we can top last year's record of 56 and 106. It wasn't looking good for a while, but us winning like four games in a row is actually a really nice stretch. And we'll continue on here in the month of August, where Daniel Susak starts off by getting injured. I also forgot to mention earlier that I had sent down Manny Pena, who was our backup catcher. But the hope was that Soderstrom would just DH and then catch whenever Shea needs an off day. And that way he gets a little development and we don't have to uh, send somebody else down that I'd like to get playing time. I also wanted to check on a few players. So Lawrence Butler down at AAA. He has 59 at-bats at this point. And he is hitting 237. So there is a little development here, thankfully. I'm not getting him into the starting lineup as much because we have Don and Capel and Clark. Capel's actually been thriving down at AAA and kind of turning around his progression for the year. And then Trenton Brooks. I think I'll move him to first base. And then I'd like to get more at-bats here for Lawrence Butler. We're playing some of our best baseball here in August. There is a 3 of 4 against the Tigers. We win a series against the Blue Jays. We haven't lost a series all month. And that ends there against the Texas Rangers. And we're finishing out the month, getting close to making those September call-ups. And we've lost five games in a row. We win one, nothing. And welcome to September. As part of our September call-ups, we're going to bring up Luis Medina. He is already on the 40-man roster. And then seeing as how his option was already used this year, we might as well bring up Logan Davidson again and see if maybe he can do a little bit better this time around. Earlier in the year, he was at the big league level, but only hit 186 and 102 at-bats. Had to send him down. The hitting has knocked down his contact versus left by 8 points this year, but we'll see if he's any better now. If he's not, we'll make another move. Oh, look who's gotten hot here in the second half of the season. Luis Estrella. Maybe we could send him up to AAA. Or we could send up Robert Passan if he wanted to just bring up a new infielder. We'll send up Passan in this case. And the plan is to get Luis Medina into the starting rotation in place of Mason Miller. So Medina will make his debut in this episode as well. Oh, there's a big injury for Justin Dean that is going to end his season and create another spot on the active roster. What if we bring up Denzel Clark? 
I mean, we already know a lot about Butler. We know a lot about Capel, but we can make another debut here with an outfielder I'm intrigued with. Good contact, decent defense across the board, a pretty balanced skill set. I want to see Denzel Clark called up. And I suppose that would create some room for Luis Estrella to try out his power at AAA. The Aviators, by the way, at AAA, 75 and 58 is pretty impressive, especially after last year. I'm not sure what the Rockhounds did in the first half of the year, but they're playing 500 ball right now. So perhaps... The future looks bright for this team, but we're 1-9 over our last 10, and now it's time for Luis Medina to make his Major League debut. And right now it looks like the entire offense is in the middle of a massive cold streak, and we've seen the average for Seth Brown dip to 228, and for Brian Anderson, 214. For a while this year, he was having a really nice season, but ever since he came back from his injury, it seems like he just hasn't been able to hit the same. So we're going to shake up this order then and get a lot of young players into the starting lineup. 49 and 89 as we take on a very strong Chicago Cubs team. Luis Medina makes his major league debut. And we're going to see Shohei Otani not pitching, but he'll be hitting as a member of the Cubs. And Jamison Tyon has had an elite season. This is impressive. A .99 whip, a 2.13 ERA. He's 13 and 4. How much offense can we realistically expect from our guys in this game? Here we go. Nick Gordon. He sends a base hit into right field. Good start. Teoscar Hernandez is hitting 252 on the year. 70 RBIs. Can't see the home runs quite yet. He's at 20, so a small step above last year and hopefully can get maybe 25 by the time the year is over. There's a drive to right center. And this one is down on the warning track as Gordon is sent around and Teoscar Hernandez opens the day with his 71st RBI and another double. All right, fast start for the A's. Seth Brown, 228. An all right year for him. Maybe not quite what I wanted to see. His home runs are mainly in line with what he's done in the past, but the average and on-base percentage have dropped. He's just not really progressing this season. Bit of a down year for Seth, mainly in this second half of the season. One and two to Brown. And got him with a curveball, strike three. And that'll bring up Tyler Soderstrom, hitting a very solid 261 so far, has 16 RBIs. Not biting there. Eight homers, 16 RBIs. That's a really good start. I think that's exactly what we hope to see calling him up. Now with a runner in scoring position. He's gone on strikes. And we have Brent Rooker doing a little DHing in this one. He's only hitting 188 and pounds it into the ground. He is retired. The Brent Rooker in real life would have hit a home run there. But hey, it's a lead handed off to Luis Medina. 24 years old, making his first big league start. And it's a, a pretty tough Cubs lineup he's up against in this one, beginning with Nico Horner. This is a more zoomed-in camera than I'm used to for the, uh, the pitching perspective. I kind of like this. This is going to be a challenging game. I've seen some of the players they've added. Of course, you have Shohei Otani as the grounder goes to Peterson. And Medina retires the first batter he faces. But you're also going to see Joey Gallo. So they filled out this lineup quite nicely. Rafael Ortega is hitting 322. That's impressive. With our play right now, I think that it's going to be going down to the wire to beat the 56 win mark from year one. Hard to believe we spent a lot of this year hovering around 500. What has happened in the second half? The offense has completely fallen apart. One and two to Ortega. That is up the middle. Pass Madrigal, a base hit. 
Well, what do you do here? Third batter you face is Shohei Otani, and it's right down the middle, but you get away with it. Might be the only one you do. There's a good changeup, but it doesn't get the call. Three and one to Shohei. And he walks him, putting two aboard for Joey Gallo. On the ground, down the line, a fair ball, and Ortega will come around. Shohei will stay put as I couldn't throw it, but it's a 1-1 game now on the RBI single. Hard to believe Joey Gallo's getting pumped up there for just a softly hit base hit, but that works. Seiya Suzuki, he has nine homers on the year, hitting 274. Medina trying to limit the damage and gets settled in. Doesn't really have a, a lot of confidence here to open in his first start. Ooh, that's into the dugout. Thought it was going to be a home run ball. Got him out in front as Medina gets strikeout number one. Busted bat, it goes foul. Count even, two and two for Christopher Morrell. And that misses badly. Hoping we can end the inning right here. Got him on the outside corner. So an up and down first inning for Medina as expected against the best hitters in this lineup. And now from one debut to another, Denzel Clark. Playing center field for us in this one. And first pitch is grounded on to second base, and he is out. Logan Davidson trying to improve his hitting down the stretch. He's hitting 196, and I wish I didn't hit that one. Hoping for a cleaner second inning for Medina as Trey Mancini leads things off. And that command is just not there yet. The changeup is really low, the curveball. So he's basically, you know, can throw the fastball in slider until we can get one of those going. And those two pitches help us even the count. I think we'll stick with the fastball here, two and two. Not biting. The payoff pitch. Oh, did he go though? He did not apparently, it's a walk. All right, didn't hit his spot, but it's a strike. I think that helps the confidence a little bit. Runner goes with the pitch and we have one play to first. How'd they time that up so perfectly? They hit and ran with a 23 speed hitter to avoid a double play. I feel outsmarted. And same deal as the changeup. Curveball was fouled off after uh, not hitting the spot. All right, 0-2, and, and reached for it. Peterson gathers and makes the play. Out in front is Horner on the changeup. And he waves at the high fastball at strike three. A much better second inning for Luis Medina. The third inning opens with a full count to Nick Gordon. And that is right down the middle and belted out to right. Gordon sends it back and it stays in the yard. But it will be a stand-up double. Teoscar drove him in back in the first inning. We'll see if we can repeat that. Got a 2-0 count here against Tyon. And he misses inside. It's going to have to be right where I want it. And it's not. Strike one. That's more like it fouled off, unfortunately. Three and two to Teoscar. Struck him out. High fastball. Maybe Seth Brown can do the job for us now. Ooh, that was center cut. And now we're behind 0-2. Oh, wow. I thought that was for sure going inside. Well, we're writing the book on how to waste an opening double here as Soderstrom's our last chance. 
We have a two and two count. Tyon trying to end it just a piece. There we go, base hit center field. No, it's a line drive. Right at him for the final out. Had a pretty good at bat going there. Still tied at one. And now Medina faces the heart of the order for the second time, but now with a bit more confidence in his arsenal. So I'm really wanting to get that change up going. Ortega the batter, it misses wildly. There you go, wave and a miss on the slider. One, two, maybe we can work on that curveball. There you go, grounded, don't let it go foul. Just missed inside to run the count full. A lot of confidence here in the slider. Can it get the job done? Just a piece. Back to the fastball, 3-2. Did not go. Ortega proving to be a tough out for us in this one as Shohei will face Medina again. There's a quick first strike. In there at the knees and the count one and two. Wow, just missed apparently. That was a really good pitch. Two and two, popped up Shohei. A lucky break, one down. Throwing a few more pitches than I'd like him to here as he will run the count full against Joey Gallo. Payoff pitch, he missed away. The walks hurting Medina here in his first career start. Seiya Suzuki. Two on, one down, just off the outside corner. Could certainly use a ground ball double play. Get ahead in the count though. That's not bad, one and two. 27 pitches here in the third inning. That's strike three on Suzuki. So he certainly had some pretty good swing and miss stuff. And once we're done, we'll check on the pitcher analysis and see just what was working well for him there. Two quick strikes on Morrell. Let's see if he picks up number five right here. Got him looking. Nice finish to the inning for Luis Medina. Rooker up the middle, nice backhand. Got him at first. Denzel Clark second at bat and second major league pitch he'll face. That's a line drive into right field as Denzel Clark will pick up his first big league hit. Staying with that slider away. We have a couple of debuts and two first major league hits in this episode. I am not sure if Soderstrom ever got his first hit, though. That one went into the left field seats. Logan Davidson trying to get his first hit, and he crushes it to right center field. Did he get all of it, though? This one carries out to the right field seats, and Logan Davidson has his first big league homer. An episode of firsts here in the A's franchise. That really came out of nowhere. But maybe it's the kind of hit that turns things around for him. Tyon's had an awesome year and we've managed to hit him pretty hard today. Pretty happy with this showing. Madrigal, his second hit falls in front of the right fielder. That's up the middle. Whoa, what a diving play. That's an impressive fielder's choice. We'll see now if Medina can pitch with a lead. We'd love to see him go five innings, but this would have to be a, a much quicker inning if he's to uh, even get a chance. 72 pitches in and just not good enough command, I think, to get the length in this start. 3-0 here to Trey Mancini. He might have the green light here, 3-0. And As it's ball four. We'll get Mason Miller up then and talk about him a little bit as we face Luis Torrens and it's down the line, drifting foul. 
Into left field, in front of Gordon, base hits. Let's get a mound visit in here. Kind of a, a rough start here for Medina, but got to get him that first experience. Dubon pops it up. Okay, got lucky there. It's an infield fly. Hesitant to let him pitch to Horner, but maybe we go one or two more at-bats. Maybe not seeing Shohei again, though. Energy is almost depleted as he misses away. Miller should be ready for the next at-bat if needed. And I think it might be needed. Into right, Hernandez got this one. I was not sure he would get there. And I don't think there's a reason to leave him out there for one more. So, Luis Medina's day will be done after three and two-third innings. You know, there were some ups and downs, some positives to take away from it, but I'm trying to win this game, and I want to make the move. Let's see if Mason Miller proves that to be a good decision. Ortega, a tough guy to strike out today, and he pops it up. Mason Miller comes in and shuts down the fourth inning. We already have seven hits off of Jamison Tyon. We'll see if we can get him out of this game soon. We have raised his whip to a 1.01, so it's no longer under one. Ooh, Seth Brown always seems to get one like that to hit. More often than not, he crushes it over the fence. One and one. Wow, another one to hit. Going the other way, but speared at third base. That's going pretty hard to center field. Soderstrom off the wall. He's got some serious power. He definitely feels different when you're hitting with him. The ball just carries. So a two-out double for Soderstrom. We'll see if we can bring him home. Brent Rooker. Could I possibly get the Brent Rooker we're seeing in real life? That is just crushing it. That is a stop at short. And the throw is in time. I want to see Brent Rooker in the home run derby this year. We got Shohei Otani, speaking of guys who hit a lot of home runs. Mason Miller. So, Miller is an interesting pitcher. I feel like he's one of those guys that could become a big league starter. Maybe not. He's kind of on the fringe because he has that C potential, but his ratings are in the, the high 60, low 70 range. So, you might be able to have some of those work out and you end up striking out Shohei. But you could end up with a 4 or 5 starter. And he's about to leave the game. Well, I was enjoying the start that we were seeing from Mason Miller, but now it's Joey Gallo. I am very nervous for this at-bat, given Weaver's lack of success this year. He was uh, a bit of a reclamation project for me this year. I liked the advanced numbers. The other numbers weren't so good, but now everything's bad this year, and I signed him to a two-year deal. So we don't have any big contracts on this team that are going to hurt, but... This is just a signing that isn't working out, and maybe next year, you know, if the roster's in better shape, I, I might just end up DFAing him and eating the money. One ball. Two Got him! Nice job by Weaver. And a new pitcher is in for the Cubs. It's Adrian Sampson. Jamison Tyon does not get the great start he was hoping for against the lowly A's. Clark picked up his first big league hit earlier. And now he's gone on strikes. But how about Logan Davidson and his last at-bat? A long wait for that first big league homer. Had to work his way back to the big league roster this season. And he sends it out to right with some carry. And this one's run down. Mancini into left, falling in front of Nick Gordon. 
see if Luke Weaver can get us uh, a better outing than the one he had previously in this episode. That was ugly. When you're a starter who gets demoted to the bullpen and you can't go a full inning, that is just a, a really bad look. Bottom of the order, Tarens tries to hold back. He failed. On the ground, Madrigal starts the turn. Double play. Another perfect swing that gets hit right at somebody. Gordon. That one just got past the shortstop. He's 81% on his stolen bases this year. I might have him run. That's to right center field. It should drop in. Gordon flying around second as Suzuki cuts it off. And that saved a run. I was... Really wishing I had sent Gordon on that because I think he might have scored. So with one down, runners at the corners for Seth Brown. Oh, that's quickly on to first base. Brown can't beat it out and he grounds into a double play. Should he pitch well enough, we could have Weaver go all the way until the ninth inning. That would be a nice... Kind of bounce back for him. I don't mind if he just becomes a relief guy as we have some young pitchers showing plenty of potential. That was an ugly swing. Two and two. Weaver's got him all confused. Luke Weaver's stuff is that good, everybody. That's why I picked him up. I knew he was actually a nasty pitcher and just needed a little more time. They're starting to come together. Nico strikes out. Ortega waves and misses. Look at Luke Weaver, man. This guy's amazing. Hit it softly. Another quick inning. I love hitting with Tyler Soderstrom. He really does feel like somebody that's going to have a tremendous role in this lineup. The power is up to a 70 now versus righties. So that just continues to rise as he has been thriving here at the big league level, hitting 263. And that's 118 at bats, a pretty decent sample. Okay, he did not hit that one hard. And Sampson beats him to the bag. Here is Denzel Clark. Weekly hit up the middle, but through. And Clark is two for four on the day. Davidson's turn as the average is brought up to 200 with this home run earlier. Into center field. This one drops in and will test the arm of the center fielder. Clark speeds into third base. That was probably an unnecessary risk, but... I want to get aggressive on the base paths in this series. Now looking for a two-out hit from Madrigal. Ooh, that was a good pitch. Down the line, a base hit, and Madrigal comes through. Three consecutive two-out hits for the A's. And Jace Peterson trying to make it four. Nope, not going to happen. Pretty good effort, though, in that inning. A three-run lead now for Luke Weaver, trying to take us to the ninth. Otani waves and misses. Pretty good pitch there to Joey Gallo, and that gets us ahead one and two. That is smoke to right field. Gallo makes contact, and it's gone. Joey Gallo hits number 18 on the season. It is a 4-2 game. So it's just one little mistake here for Luke Weaver, but otherwise, it's been a really good outing. Seiya Suzuki. Two strikes. Just low. Trying to avoid the walk. That is smoke to left. Turning foul at the last moment. Thank you. 
Weaver gets him on the changeup. What a pitch. And we have two strikes on Christopher Morrell. Weaver just missed ending the inning. Got him that time, though. Luke Weaver with a pretty strong outing. Where do those strikeouts come from? Seth Brown is hitless. We have so many hits today. He's got to get one. And it is hit right at the second baseman. As we go bottom of the ninth inning, and that means our closer, Domingo Acevedo, will enter the game. 28 of 32 this year. He's been a solid closer. And he's doing so without a lot of strikeouts. Only 22 in 33 innings. So I picked up three of those in the, the save we had with him earlier in the video. Trey Mancini's up. It's the 7-8-9 hitters. Cubs going to need to rally to get to their big bats. One and two to Trey Mancini. Miss low. Popped him up into right field. Hernandez is over. One down. Terenz is one for three on the day as the slider is dropped in for strike one. Foul the way. Two strikes for Domingo Acevedo. And it's rolled over to Davidson. Quiet day for him at short, out number two. And it's all up to the nine hitting Mauricio Dubon. 0 for three today. On the ground, right at Jace Peterson. This game is over in the A's win. A 4-2 game. Hitting Jamison Tyon pretty hard and getting some big hits out of young guys like Denzel Clark and Logan Davidson. How about that? That's the kind of game you want to see down the stretch. We win because the young guys did a really good job. And despite a shortened start by Luis Medina, this was a really good performance for our bullpen. And we'll go through some of the numbers here. But uh, Gordon, three hits. Hernandez had two. And then you'll love seeing the six, seven, eight hitters. Two for Clark, two for Davidson, and three for Madrigal. I didn't even realize Weaver went as far in this game as Medina did, but he had six strikeouts, only allowing the home run to Joey Gallo. Mason Miller, he gets the victory, actually, despite uh, only getting two outs and leaving injured. Acevedo, a step closer to 30 saves on the season. And I forgot to check out the pitching analysis, so I won't have the numbers there on Medina's stuff, but, oh, it's a, a blister. That's why Mason Miller is uh, hurt. There's a blister from uh, that strikeout he got against Shohei Otani, so he'll just miss a few days. And there's only a few weeks of baseball left to go this year. So I think we're going to have maybe one more episode in year two. If I have time, I will do another stream and try to jam some fun highlights into that season finale. But that means later this week, most likely the weekend, we'll get on to our second offseason in the series and make even more moves for this team. We sit with 50 wins. The goal is to get 57. It is not a high bar to clear. Do you think this team can sneak out seven more wins in the month of September? Here is a stat update as we wrap up the episode. Seth Brown leads the team in home runs with 21. Teoscar Hernandez, 71 RBIs. The top batting average for an everyday player would be Nick Madrigal on his 284 average. You love seeing what Tyler Soderstrom is doing. This is really, really impressive and a good sign going into season three. 26 doubles for Nick Gordon. He has been fantastic for us. Seven triples for Teoscar Hernandez. Five for Tyler Wade, who hasn't been bad. Definitely a good utility player. Cody Bellinger still leads us with a 3.0 war and is up to a 76 overall. In the pitching department, the ERAs haven't been great. This second half of the year, our pitchers have just been getting blasted, it seems. Acevedo and Lamette are like the only two guys in the bullpen doing a really good job. Uh, Blackburn's had a pretty good second half. 
and then it's been up and down really everywhere else. So I don't think these war numbers are going to be too nice. Only two guys above a 1.0. And one guy who's fallen this year significantly is Shintaro Fujinami. I've spent very little time talking about him this year, other than the fact that he's just struggled. He's won eight less games, which really isn't an important stat to measure, but it's on top of everything else. More home runs allowed, a significantly worse ERA, less quality starts, 4.2 less war, striking out, you know, 1.6 less per nine innings. The walks are up 25%, and the home runs have nearly doubled. That's a pretty rough year. Wow, we're 40 games back. And on that note, that is it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of good action in this one. Again, if you want to be a part of those live streams, just subscribe. And I don't usually like give a ton of notice for them. But if you hit the bell for notifications, you'll know if I do any streams in this series. And I'd like to do them here and there. It is a pretty fun time and you should check those out if you haven't. But please leave a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next episode that should bring us to the end of year two. Have a great day, everybody.